Microphone check. One, two, three. Cheddar cheese in the place to be. Silver price report coming at ya. Bringing you the daily price of real physical silver. We're going to give a big shout out to Jay Christian's burner account out there. Thanks for the follow on Twitter. Thanks for the retweet. You know, we're going to give a a shout out to all the subscribers, even all the lurkers out there. That's all good, man. Even if that's all good, that's okay. You don't have to hit the subscribe button. You can just watch. It's cool. All right. Well, let's get into it for today. I actually think I'm, well, a couple things. Um, First, I I missed the 11 p.m. uh, prices, so my bad on that. Secondly, I think I've been saying the wrong date. Yeah. Um, so my this episode might seem a little screwy compared to yesterday. So my bad on that too. So this is for August 26th, 2021, priced in US dollars. American Silver Eagle, $32.78. Canadian Maple Leaf, $28.96. Austrian Philharmonic. $28.08. Private Mint, $27.33 with an average price of $29 or yeah, $29.29. Premium, $5.61 over spot. That average price is down about 16 cents. Premium up, not only a penny. So I'm pretty much flat there. Spot price here ended the day uh, about like 23.62.63 there at about midnight. You can see what would that be about eight o'clock. Looks like there was a uh, a tamp down because that's that's pretty much a fishing line, almost straight down. I mean, if you compare it to some of these other dips, it looked more hook. That looks more. A natural for and from my understanding that'd be um, you know someone dumping enough silver to, to trigger the um, stop losses and then push everybody out of their position but you can see as of this recording trend is starting to starting to go up there on that spot price now everybody's gonna be watching and waiting for Jerome Powell's uh, f- uh, speech tomorrow Because the Jackson Hole meeting is done. Looks like there was a small dip in the NASDAQ and the S&P. Now, I'm of the impression, and I think a lot of people out here in the precious metals community are under the impression that the Fed is just going to sit here and be like, hey, it's all good. There's nothing really to see here. Probably not going to taper. If they do something, that's, that's a very big if. It might be a small symbolic um, move up in the Fed funds rate, raising the interest rate there. I could see them doing something, you know, again, small, maybe to signal that, yeah, we actually think the economy is strong. I doubt they're going to do that personally. Um, I just think it's too risky. I mean, earlier this year, I, I, would, I, I think it was maybe the June meeting, something like that, May, June meeting, when uh, Powell came out and said that they're going to they're gonna taper in 2023 and there looked to be a, um, a sell-off. So if people are selling off on the hint of a taper in three years, what do you think they're going to do if they see any type of sign, whether it's... Uh, um, decreasing bond purchases or even raising any interest rate. What do you think the market's going to do then? That's that's more meaningful than just saying you're going to do it at some time in the future. And the problem that I see with the Fed doing that is the possibility of losing control because this isn't 2018. There's a lot more crazy stuff going on out in the world um, that I think could could make a sell off a very, very bad. I, I don't I think, the you know, let's say the Fed hikes rates, you know, whatever, however, a couple percentage points, I don't know, basis points or whatever the hell, it's a small number, whatever number in your brain is small. And let's say the market starts to sell off. And so let's say 
uh, then, you know, at, the next, oh, because I don't think they're going to, because I believe in this meeting they're going to, see, I don't know if this is the same as, a, um, I don't know the, the, the inner mechanics. See, I don't know if they, they will come out and, I don't know if they're making an announcement or what, because what I'm all, I'm hearing a lot is about November, the November meeting. This is when they're going to, they'll start to taper or raise rates or, or whatever. So I don't know if, if they can announce that they'll start to do it now. I suspect that they can because they can pretty much do whatever the hell they want to do because that's what they've been doing. But anyway, mechanics aside, um, you know, let's say whatever. They raise it up 0.01% from whatever it is. I, I don't know what the Fed funds rate is right now. And let's say we do get a sell-off. And then uh, the next meeting, they they backtrack. They, they lower the, the rate right back. Well, there's no telling that that'll actually work and reverse the market like it did in 2018 and remember the last time the fed started to taper we got the uh repo crisis uh nine months after because you had the 2018 taper tantrum that's december they start to low rate uh, they, they raise rates uh market starts to sell off then they come back start um lowering rates and then in september 2019 we got the repo crisis and then, you know, a few months after that, coincidentally, you get a pandemic and they shut down the freaking global economy and then start doing QE forever. You know, just that's just a coincidence that all that happened. It's just, you know, real convenient. And the other reason why I don't think they'll do anything symbolic, uh, they just set up the... Oh, no. I was, I was going back and forth with a friend of this on the repo facility. So I don't, you know, let me, let me hold on to that thought. I'll, I'll have to think that, I'll have to think that through. Cause I know, uh, the repo stuff gets real murky and there's a lot of, a lot of different opinions out there on uh, the effects of repo. So I, let's set, let's set that to the side. Um, but just to use a, a brief analogy for my thought, uh, doing anything, any type of symbolic rate hike is like flinching at somebody like, come on, punk. That's, that's all symbolic. You really ain't, ain't trying to fight. You're just trying to display through your action dominance over the other person without really trying to fight. The problem is by flinching at somebody, they might actually hit you and get into the fight. And that's the whole thing that I mean about the Fed losing control. You can try to do something symbolic. Go ahead. Um, but again, because of the environment that they're in or that we're in, there's no guarantee if, if the market starts to sell off and there's a panic that that panic uh, becomes prolonged and that the Fed will straight up lose control. So again, my money is on that um, the Fed doesn't do anything. I was listening to uh, Dave Kranzler over on, uh, he was on Arcadia Economics being interviewed and I kind of agree with his, his sentiment. He was saying something like, it'll be, to paraphrase, it'll be similar to the last meeting where Powell comes out and just does a, a freaking word salad and just mumbo jumbos his way through the freaking meeting you know his mouth is going to be moving but he ain't really going to be saying nothing another reason why i don't think what we're going to see the fed do anything here oh well actually actually i i, I got mixed up um if if the fed does something which is significant and not necessarily you know a, a small um rate hike but if, if they if it does start to look like they're going to or willing to pop the bubble um it'll in my opinion that's a suggestion that the digital money is ready to be rolled out because i think that um the government and the central banks need a pro some type of other crisis besides what's going on with covid right now to justify um rolling out the digital money because remember powell said that before they before they roll out the, the the CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency, they're going to do it regardless of what anybody says. Um, but he did, Powell did claim that he's going to go out on a, you know, nationwide tour and talk to people. But the feedback ain't going to do nothing. That's just freaking symbolic so they can claim that they heard from people. Um, but yeah, they so they have this banking for all act. We've talked about it here. So... Um, a crisis would provide cover for the banking for all act to come out of um, blow the dust off of it because it's being held in committee right now.
so they can blow the dust off of it and then introduce it. Because remember, the Banking for All Act was first put in under the, the first COVID relief bill, and it was um, sold as an easier way to get uh, funds to people and get their get their stimmy checks to people. So, you know, let's say you pop the bubble, um, you know, mass unemployment, all that stuff, all hell breaks loose. Then you come out and say, well, we need to give stimmy checks to people, but the checks are too slow. The paper checks are too slow here. Let's use these FedNow accounts. Let's do these digital wallets. And so they'll get their cover. So if anything significant, if the Fed makes any type of significant move, that would signal to me that the digital money, we're, we're in the next step. And then um, also keep in mind that the there's been a bunch of new SDRs issued. I'm not sure how many were issued. This is some information I'm getting from uh, Lynette Zhang. So that was, that's just something to, to keep in mind that... Um, this digital money stuff you you know it's 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 in the works and there's a great video by robert Keynes over at gold silver pros that you guys can go and find gold silver pros over on youtube where he talks about um i think it's the the bank of international settlements they had a lecture a presentation on the basic structure um of the uh cbdc's and the structure does sound like a basket of currencies, which is which is the SDR, the special drawing rights by the IMF. So, and I'm just trying to connect those dots. Digital money ready to be rolled out. It's probably going to be uh, some type of basket of of uh, basket of currencies like the SDR, and they've issued more SDR. So, digital money coming out, which is going to be an SDR, and they just so happen to IMF just so happens to issue. A bunch more SDRs. Another reason why I don't think that um, they're quite ready to taper yet uh, is the Supreme Court dropped the hammer on non-paying tenants Thursday ruling President Joe Biden's latest eviction ban unconstitutional. So it looks like, um, you know, the I, I don't know how bad, um, how bad the, the, rent status you know the rent situation is i don't know how many people out there are or are not still paying their rent shout out to mr l out here um i know he owns some properties i don't know if i can well you said that on a comment so i ain't really busting you out i didn't want to put your business out there man but um you know the, the, his reporting from i guess you know from the ground for him he said he's not really having no problems now that's not necessarily indicative of everybody else but that does show that, you know, it's not, not every, not every landlord is experiencing, um, you know, problems with their tenants. You know, I'm still paying my rent. So again, I, depending on the, the, the rent situation, you know, I, I don't, I don't, again, I don't really see the fed with, with this ruling coming out. I don't see them wanting to, um, pop the bubble just yet and, and not only that but powell still has uh, um i don't know when he's up for renomination sometime next year so i suspect he's just trying to hold it together until then as well and if he does not seek another um another term and i don't know i don't know how that whole process works uh, but if he does not seek another term to me that's another another cl clear sign just something to add to the list that uh, situation ain't so is not doing so hot. Now I want to go veer off here, you know, uh, change topics a little bit, talk about Peru here. Um, just you know, let you guys know we're still following this. This is the number two silver producer in the world. So in the turn to hard left that their government recently did, I think is. Uh, something we need to be paying attention to and it's something that i don't think uh, not many other analysts out here are at least talking about at least on the podcast maybe they're talking about it on the newsletters and things like that but peru's congress pushes cabinet confirmation vote to friday extending uncertainty so castillo who is the new left-leaning president he's push he's pushing forward a uh very left-leaning cabinet now, earlier in the day, Prime Minister Guido Bellido asked Congress for a yes vote and outlined plans to lift Peru out of 
quote, one of the most grave political, social, environmental, and health crises of recent decades. Now, Bayudo, from my understanding, is a hard Marxist. He's the leader of the uh, Libre Peru Party, uh, which put Castillo into power. Um, and I, I believe he's made comments about um, liking the Cuban regime, liking Castro, and that kind of thing. So he's the Jafar of this whole um, of this whole thing. I, I forget the character from uh, Lord of the Rings. He's the he's that Worm Tongue is his name. He's the dude that uh, that put the spell, put the charm on the king and had him catatonic. You know, he was the one really calling the shot. So it. You know, really might be again. I'm not. I'm not too certain on the inner workings of what's going on, but it very might, very well might be that Bayudo is the is the one pulling the strings, is the one giving the ideas to uh, Castillo on what to do and what direction to uh, push um, push push their country. And I'm not sure uh, what um, what role the prime minister plays in um in peru i'm I'm, you know full full disclosure i'm not too well versed on their uh, internal politics but i've i've saw this and thought it was very interesting beido began his speech in uh cuecha the most common indigenous language in peru which prompted the head of the legislature to ask him to speak in spanish because she could not understand him now this is some 40 chess that he's playing because what he do- just did by speaking in that language is he differentiated himself from the rest of the more moderate and right-leaning Congress and differentiated himself and distanced himself from the language of the colonizer there. So he made himself look even more like, I'm, I'm the spokesman for the people. Look at you. You don't even want me to speak in their tongue. You want me to speak in the tongue of the colonizer. And then see people... The, the current Congress is not really not really with you. And then here's another. Um, well, I, we'll get to some more 40 chess here in a second. Oops. Sorry about that. Uh, something to, to, to keep in mind here. Um, I don't know. I don't know who who said this. Uh, he said the government intends to tap the excess profits of mining companies at times of high. Inter- oh, this is from Beido. He said the government intends to tap the excess profits of mining companies at times of high international prices of raw materials. Peru is the world's second largest copper producer and mining is the engine of the Andean country's economy. Of course, they don't mention silver. Uh, But again, there's a hard, hard, hard push coming from this government um, on the profits of the mining company and that can affect, might might affect the, uh, the supply supply of silver and there's something else I, I thought was interesting among projects the government would push he added was a railway running from the andes to the pacific to carry passengers and mining goods to carry passengers and mining goods to be funded through a public private alliance with international partners so this sounds a lot like the new um uh, uh stakeholder capitalism um you know the 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 company or the corporation now has to take into consideration the community and the environment. When I was in college, uh, uh, they called it the triple bottom line, which was profits and environment and social impact. Now, on the surface, um, that sounds great. And there's nothing wrong with it in and of itself. Um, in fact, I think what we would refer to as shareholder capitalism, focusing on the profits for the investors, also implicitly entails caring about the community and caring about um the environment because um you know nobody's gonna invest in a company that is looked down upon in a negative manner by the community um from from my understanding there was the the big uh there was a uh, the huge product recall with tylenol back in the 80s it was a big story and they uh once that story came forward um uh, the, the Tylenol's uh, or the parent company, uh, their stock price took a hard hit, um, and that's because investors knew there's probably going to be um, lawsuits and that kind of thing. So, you know, inherent in in the profit motive is concern for 
the community and concern for the environment. So we don't need these new concepts of stakeholder capitalism. Stakeholder capitalism really is a front um, for socialism and as what Ludwig von Mises would call socialism of the German pattern or what we might more commonly call fascism, which is a merging of the corporation and the government. The corporations will be carrying out uh, specifically the edicts of the government. The government will not outright nationalize and own the corporation. It'll just direct the corporation and the uh, entrepreneur is reduced to that of simply like a shop manager who um, you know doesn't really make any decisions for the shop of what to what to sell and you know what to charge the government sets all that through regulation and the uh, entrepreneur just carries out those orders and so that's exactly what we're we're seeing there so even though Beito uh, might be a Marxist um, this type of stuff really is, a, is just a push towards fascism Peru Libra party that's that's the not uh, Libre Peru so that that's um that's the name of it anyway let me get on to this 40 chest here uh this last sentence government sources had suggested that Castillo would seek to reshuffle his cabinet in a bid to stave off its rejection by Congress but in the end no changes were made and and to me that's again another signaling uh from Castillo that you know we're not going to let these moderates and these these politicians who aren't really for the people we're not going to let them change our worldview we're going to stand strong with the cabinet that we have and then really it's looking like when congress denies the appointments for the cabinet castillo can use that to say look see the per- current government is not for you people they don't like you they don't want the representatives that that care about you they don't want to put these people in the cabinet positions and that might spur more support uh for the peru libre party um it might get people to go out and replace uh members of congress with more members from uh peru libre so that's just just a few thoughts there well that's it for tonight um i will be watching the uh uh, powell's press conference tomorrow it's all be getting back to you guys with that so until then hopefully you can incorporate this into your analysis hopefully you found this helpful peace out